stood and stared at it, marveled at its beauty, its genius. Billions of people just living out their lives, oblivious. Every mammal on this planet instinctively develops a natural equilibrium with the surrounding environment, but you humans do not. You move to an area and you multiply and multiply until every natural resource is consumed. And the only way you can survive is to spread to another area. There is another organism on this planet that follows the same pattern. Do you know what it is? A virus. Now, most people would shy away from calling humanity a virus, but what is it about our existence that would give someone that impression? A quick survey of the results of reckless mining operations could easily convince someone that our actions are having a disease-like effect on the planet's ecosystem. Open pit mining started in Butte, Montana in 1955 with the opening of the Berkeley Pit. This replaced the more expensive and dangerous method of underground mining. This more efficient method came with a price. Butte is the proud owner of the world's largest Superfund site, a giant toxic lake. Open pit mining is safer in one sense, but presents other dangers. The water in the pit is so acidic that some minerals can be extracted directly from the pit water. The water is dangerous for any wildlife. In 1995, a flock of 300 migrating snow geese landed in the pit water and immediately died. One of the big problems associated with open pit mining is the question of who cleans up the mess. The answer to this question gets tricky when companies are allowed to mine on public land. Mining companies are currently expected to fund cleanup duties, but there's no guarantee that the company will stay solvent long enough to clean up the mess. These giant trucks high in the Rocky Mountains are doomed. Within hours, there will be no mining in the mining city of Butte. This shutdown is the end of an era in Montana. Well, I lost my job 10 years ago when the copper mines shut down. I held on for a year or two, then I had to leave this town. With copper dropping out of sight, the ACM was up and gone. I am a Butte miner, long ways from my home. The Mining Act of 1872 is the basis for the mining industry in America, opening up public land for mining speculators. The demand for minerals during the World Wars and the electrification of America pushed lawmakers to encourage more and more mining operations, with little regard for the long-term consequences. In many ways, Butte felt the consequences the hardest, with many viewing the local landscape as a necessary sacrifice in the march of technological progress. Was it really necessary to demolish neighborhoods to get at some metal? Our leaders seem content to trade short-term prosperity for long-term environmental stability. Because we did not have the knowledge in 1955 that we have today, it is hard to imagine how we could have avoided this situation. The Berkeley Pit can serve as a lesson for how to handle mine waste in the future, though. The facility recently installed to treat the pit water cost $18 million to build and $2 million to operate annually. These costs should have been factored into the initial decision to allow the pit operations to start. Bonds are one method of ensuring enough funds for proper cleanup. By requiring a high-priced bond, a local or state government can ensure a minimum budget for cleanup. If we do this, we can avoid the legal hassle that comes along with determining responsibility for treating waste sites and put the burden directly on the mine operator. BP Arco has spent over $800 million trying to clean up Butte in the Clark Fork watershed area. If we want a clean and safe future, we have to recognize the permanent nature of mining operations. The Berkeley pit was created in a century, but will last for eons. We can only hope that it will serve as a warning for future generations. Well, I lost my job 10 years ago when the copper mines shut down. I held on for a year or two, then I had to leave this town.